Hey, Redcon Raider here. Before we get started, I'd just like to thank the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Matthew Holmquist, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, as we continue exploring... Hmm. Actually, uh, come to think of it, I guess we have no idea where we really are, do we? Faerun, I guess. Though we do at least know that we're just a few days out from Baldur's Gate proper. Anyway, speaking of maps, um... Unfortunately, we, uh seem to have lost our map markers between the end of episode 2 and the beginning of this recording session. Specifically, the uh, map marker showing us where that second Harper's cache was. I still have a good general idea of where it is, about four grid squares to the north, I think, but I'm a lot less confident about just wandering out there blindly without a specific marker. So, with that in mind, I guess we'll head east instead we do know that there was a cache on top of the land bridge just south of the overgrown ruins. I will admit uh, I'm also a bit leery because we've got all these goblin corpses just north of us. We're still running on an undermanned party at the moment, so uh, I guess at the very least we should find a fourth before we go wandering into the unknown. Well, technically this is all unknown, but... You get what I'm saying. Footprints. There may be even more that survived the crash. Uh-huh. And that might be our fourth. We've got a dark spot on our mat. Let's fill that out real quick. Okay, and that is where we fought the first batch of intellect of ours. All right, I've got my bearings. Hmm, you know, um, I can't help but notice we've got a very conspicuous barricade here. Yeah, as opposed to the completely open path with the ancient rune circle. That does pique my curiosity. Let's, um, have a quick look. I will say that uh, I am rather happy to see that as of the latest hot patches, your party members are slightly less likely to blithely run through environmental hazards. You'll notice our guys are all stopping just shy of the fire and waiting for me to jump them across manually. Oh, careful. Broken. Must have been here a while. Okay, obvious signs of traps. That makes me even more nervous about blindly heading north. Hmm. Though... This looks promising. Another broken trap. Who made these things? Oh, hey. What have we here? Lazel, good to see you. I guess we should uh, offer an assist. My fortune. 
Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. You again. Get rid of them. Hmm. Holy hells. Another one. Lay tie, Nymesa. You know what? We will at least give them a chance to uh, leave of their own accord. If you value your life, just walk away. Ha! I guess they're not really looking for a fight. Fair enough. Demaze! Come, I miss her. Now. Enough gawking. Get me down. Nice angle. That talking fence post is right. We should get her down. Observe and listen. Enough dawdling. Get me down. All right. Sorry. Um. This might hurt. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. You will join me. We must find a crash. Our people possess the cure for this infection. Lies. Just get rid of her. Hmm. Should I trust my fellow Gith? Or the crazy woman who's threatened to kill me multiple times? Let me think. Locating a crash would be wise indeed. Where might we find one? The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. This means a crash is near. I honor our alliance, Ken. Let us seek a crash. An ally from Kresh Kalir. Few know such fortune. You will call me Lazel. Come, we find this Zoru, and we ask where he has seen our kin. Wow, we got a whole bunch of journal entries there. Oh, and our first level up. Nice. Ah, okay. All of these new entries basically just revolve around Lazelle and her crash, so... A little redundant. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at these level ups. I kind of planned for this, but um, we'll talk our way through it. Now, first of all, I should note that um, level ups in 5th edition actually seem pretty simplistic. We've got more hit points, we've got an extra spell slot, but there's not a whole lot that we really control aside from selecting our first two Eldritch Invocations essentially specialized perks or feats that will help determine what kind of warlock we want to be. I think the most obvious choices for most folks are Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast, which are very effective if you want to be a conventional blast lock, which is what my original test character was, but I kind of made the conscious decision to not move in that direction. It was effective, but um, not particularly interesting. Given that I have instead committed myself to become sort of a half-assed, improvised blade lock, I think we're going to lean towards Fiendish Vigor instead. That one allows us to cast a level 1 version of False Life, though it is important to note that while it does effectively give us an infinite source of temporary hit points, in 5th edition temporary hit points don't stack, so we can't stack it with itself and we can't stack it with Armor of Agathis, but we can use it to make sure we still have temporary hit points even after we take a hit. And um, in theory, it also makes a good emergency fallback if we find ourselves in a dangerous spot during combat, you know, just to uh, make it a little less likely that we'll drop if we're badly injured. 
Aside from that, we do have to choose a second invocation, and I'm not really seeing a lot here that is all that appealing. Devil's Sight is a maybe. We could use Dark Vision, but that really feels kind of lackluster. I mean, I guess we could take Agonizing Blast. It's not like we don't make ranged attacks, although I do try to focus on melee. Likewise, um, Beguiling Influence is kind of a no-go. It's actually useful. Uh, it grants you two free proficiencies in Deception and Persuasion. But again, I told myself I wasn't going to go the Persuasion route, just to keep things more interesting. You know what? Let's go for Beast Speech. I had that marked as a possibility on my sticky notes here, but I had to kind of talk myself into it. It's essentially the Pet Pal perk from Divinity Original Sin. Mostly just flavor, amusing conversations, and the occasional minor trinket or side quest. But we are here to explore content, so yeah, yeah, I think that's a good fit. As for our new spell, I am still tempted to grab Arms of Hadar, but I think we're going to keep things simple and just grab Hex instead. I didn't have much luck with it when I was doing testing, but I'm willing to give it another shot. And uh, that aside, even if it doesn't end up working out for us, we can always just swap it out for something else once we hit level 3. Alright, moving on. Let's go ahead and rearrange our hotbar real quick. I haven't memorized all these little symbols just yet, so better safe than sorry. And Lazel. Now, at a glance, she appears to be a pretty straightforward fighter. Strength-based, obviously. With Charisma as her predictable dump stat. I mean, there were some subtle clues in conversation, but, you know, I hate to uh, assume. Obviously, she is a strength-based fighter, so that immediately rules out archery and two-weapon fighting style. Both of those are dex-based. Which narrows down our options to these four. And of these, I think we're also going to rule out great weapon fighting. Which, honestly, is tempting. Under most other circumstances, that is what I'd go with for her. But in this particular case, Eluthen is actually destined to end up using a great sword himself. And it does feel a bit redundant to have two great weapon specialists in the same party. I suppose the other thing to keep in mind here is that we don't actually have a proper tank for our party. I mean, we've got Shadowheart, but she's rocking a minus one modifier from Dexterity, whereas Lazel here could theoretically have a 14 Dexterity when she hits level four. So let's have a look at our remaining options here. First up, we've got Defensive Style, which simply adds a flat plus one to our armor class. Not a bad bonus, but definitely a bit on the boring side. After that, we've got Dueling Style, which is slightly more interesting because on its surface, it only offers a flat plus two bonus for wielding a single one-handed weapon at a time. But what it doesn't specify is that you still get that bonus as long as the item you're holding in your other hand is not a weapon, which means we can still use shields because those are officially considered armor. The really weird thing there is that, um, in theory, if I'm understanding this correctly, that means that with dueling style, you would actually do more damage on average wielding a longsword in one hand than you would in both hands. And then we've got protection style, which honestly is another really interesting one. It's another shield-centric style, but in this case, it grants a new type of reaction in addition to the um, attacks of opportunity. In this case, if an ally is attacked within 1.5 meters of her, essentially 10 feet or two spaces, 
she can automatically use a reaction to interpose her shield between the enemy and her ally. From a gameplay standpoint, it means the enemy has disadvantage. They have to roll twice and take the lower of the two attack rolls, making it a lot less likely they'll hit Lazelle's ally. But it does rely on fairly precise character placement, which isn't always easy to do when you're talking about a gridless system, so... I think I'm leaning towards dueling instead. That's a nice passive bonus. It's always active. We don't have to worry about precise placement. Um, anyway, um, I'm not 100% certain about that choice, or any of these choices, honestly. So, feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I can always just go back to a previous save and make a few tweaks. Not a big deal. That does, however, bring us to our other big problem right now, which is that she does have a longsword, which gets her one step towards where she needs to be, but she also needs a shield. We'll go ahead and, um, borrow Shadow Hearts. I'm sure she won't mind. I am actually tempted to hand off the chain shirt, too, but that might be a bit much. That aside, even with the padded armor, Lazelle's actually doing okay. She's still rocking a 14 AC. We will, obviously, keep an eye out for something better, but she's not exactly hurting. Next, we've got Shadowheart, who thankfully has a much more straightforward level up. Aside from hit points and spell slots, she gains her first charge of Divinity, which I guess is what they now use to fuel powers like Turn Undead, as well as deity-specific abilities like Invoke Duplicity, which is interesting. In this particular case, it apparently conjures up an illusion which can't actually fight, but can flank opponents for you. Unfortunately, um... Much like with Cleric spell slots and Wizard spell slots, you only actually restore your points of divinity each time you take a long rest. So, we're not really going to get a whole ton of use out of this. But I would like to try it at least once. Aside from that, the only other thing we have to do is set her new spell slot. Huh, I think it actually... Auto chose a couple of spells for us. Yeah, I definitely did not choose these two. Alright, we will take Guiding Bolt and Reset Shield of Faith, which I could have sworn we already had selected. Let me just rearrange your hotbar real quick. Then we'll take care of Asterion's level up and go check out those ruins. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, Asterion. This one is mercifully short. He gains some extra hit points, and he gains a new rogue ability. Cunning Action Dash, which lets him dash as a bonus action. Handy, makes him a lot more mobile. And it is yet another reason not to use two-weapon fighting. I mean, to be perfectly frank, we could still wield two short swords. It would just require a lot more micromanagement from one turn to the next. We're not too far from the ruins at this point. We're just a bit to the northwest. So let's start angling in that direction. I am actually a bit curious to see if those tiefling uh, hunters actually went somewhere. In Divinity Original Sin, most NPCs didn't just vanish. They were actually persistent, so when they went somewhere, they went somewhere. And speaking of NPCs... Looks like someone else beat us to these ruins. It actually looks like they're trying to excavate them.
Okay, well that is obviously some sort of caster type. And then we've got two fighters over here. Gathered around this gap and uh, right beneath this very conspicuous crane. They're listed as neutral, so we're obviously going to try to talk to them, but... Given that pretty much everyone we've encountered has either tried to kill us or has just been really mean, um, we're going to take our usual round of precautions here. In fact, uh, now that we have another spell slot to play with, let's go ahead and fire off a Hellish Rebuke. If I understand this description properly, uh, there is no actual time limit on this spell and it will instead just sit on us until someone has the audacity to actually try to attack us. And here we go. Oh, okay. Huh. I was actually expecting that to um, trigger dialogue, because I know you can talk to these guys. But I think... Oh, okay. I think there might actually be context-sensitive directional approaches. Like, if we had approached them from the front, they would have told us to stop and uh, engaged in dialogue. But because we approached them from the side and caught them off guard, they immediately attacked us instead. That is actually pretty neat. Of course, now we have to kill them, so... Lazelle? <laughs> Poor guy. Ooh, let's try this. Okay, sure. I don't think that played out quite the way it was supposed to, but still did damage. <laughs> you all right? You okay? They're probably fine. I've got to say, um, they obviously need to work some kinks out of the weird blend of D&D &D and Divinity Original Sin they've got going on here. But that was a lot of fun. Huh, and it is over. Wow. You know, I have fought these guys once or twice before, but I have never killed them that quickly. Then again, I've never approached them from that side before. Time and the elements have left the plaque unreadable. Okay. Oh, nice. A uh, set of scale armor. That will immediately go to Lazelle. Not quite as good as her uh, silver half plate, but that sadly has been lost to the other. Never to be seen again. Hmm. Chain shirt is interesting, too, because... Despite being medium, it actually doesn't penalize stealth. Not that it really matters here. We'll go ahead and shuffle some gear. Uh, we have a full party now, so we might as well take advantage of that.
Yeah, that looks fine. Did we lose a corpse? Twisting vines. Difficult terrain. Characters move at half speed and may become ensnared. Ensnared creatures take 1d6 piercing damage per turn. Well, we will have to watch our step then. Ooh, Arrow of Acid. 1d4 extra acid damage and leaves a puddle of acid. Neat. I know they have a basic crafting system planned for Baldur's Gate 3, so uh, I can't help but wonder if they're going to let us craft specialty arrows like we can in Original Sin 2. Check that mage. She looks very, um, dead. I can't help but notice we didn't find a key, but we might be able to get in through this hole. Let's, um, Look around the rest of the area. Come on, guys. Really? You know what? That's fine. Um, we need to take a short rest anyway. That'll uh, recharge our sorcerer spells and our action surge. Mm, we also have that... Uh, land bridge to check out. There was that uh, little hidden cache we saw. Hey, we even got some bonus XP. Okay, nothing really uh, phenomenal there, but we did get rewarded for our efforts, so no complaints. In fact, um, I would dare say that's one of my favorite things about the various Larian RPGs. The uh, story's okay, the combat's okay, but scouring the world for hidden loot and secret puzzles, that is something I've always enjoyed. In fact, uh, let's double back and fill in this one last gap here real quick, then we'll uh, double back and climb down that hole. No, wait, it's not down there, it's up here. You're alive! That's unexpected. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood. An intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gale. Well met. Well, thank you for your invaluable assistance. Where did you just come from? See that rune? Nether Reese, I think. Weave so thick on it, it's almost viscous. I had a taste, and just like that, swept from one room to the next. Not to mention, 
You're staring at me like a Rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? <laughs> I'm better than a wizard. I'm a warlock. There's a gust of weave about you, but it's a mere breeze. I need a tempest. It'll have to wait. The primary need is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Yes. Vividly. Then you know what happens next. It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer, either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Is this a conversation or an interrogation? Just trying to figure out where we stand. Conclusion? Nowhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Well, um... This guy's kind of a jerk, and uh, we're already full up. That aside, a warlock is clearly superior to a wizard. But we don't want to miss content, so we will go ahead and collect him and have him head to our camp. And I'm flattered, I'm sure. But it seems you're traveling with a substantial amount of companions already. Maybe later, yes? Dude, you asked me. And now you're just going to walk away? Man, screw that guy. <laughs> you know what? If he ends up at our campsite, great. If not, I'm not going to sweat it. And yet another, hardly the warmest of welcomes. All right, so nothing out here. Let's find our way back to those ruins. Hmm, another archway. Though this one seems to be outside the play area. Okay, so we've got two potential entrances. We've got this pit, and then we've got the front door, which is locked with no obvious key. We've also got a side path here, so let's check that out. Hmm. That is interesting. Oh yeah, we've got a hatch down there. Look at that. So apparently we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for conspicuously placed vines and ropes, too. Hi there. You dead? Yeah, he's dead. Well, we still don't have a key, but let's see if we can crack that open. Guess not. All right, well, we're not going to waste any more thief tools on that. Let's double back and try the other door. If we can't get that one open, then um, we'll jump down the hole instead. Oh, but first, let's get some rest. And I am going to wolf down like half a sandwich here. Well, that didn't give me enough time for any sandwich. Also, uh... Hellish Rebuke stays through short rests. As does our armor. Nice. That actually means we can cast some other spells now. Mm. 
A Sterion, man. Come on. Don't make me come back there. I will turn this adventure around. Take you. <sighs> Waste of a perfectly good spell slot. All right, let us hastily proceed before Asterion finds any new ways to kill himself. Ooh, free shovel. Didn't even see that there. Thank you, Gibblebock. Everything all right out there? Who or what is a Gimblebock? Actually, Gimbalbach triggered some trap. He needs help now. Hmm, not bad. <laughs> of course. Oh, look at that. We've got advantage, but I'm not sure why. Told him it wasn't safe out there. Get inside and I'll rustle up some bandages. Well, I am certainly not going to complain. Let's go ahead and get ourselves prepped and we will uh, pay that guy a visit. I think we'll go ahead and skip Mage Hand this time. I've been casting it a lot lately because in theory, it's useful in combat for pushing people around, distracting enemies, but um, there seems to be something weird about the timer on it. It continues counting down in real time, even when you enter turn-based combat, so it often ends up de-summoning before we even get our first turn. You're dead. Ah, hello darkness, my old friend. Looks like we've got adequate lighting here at least, so... Let's go ahead and poke this guy to death. Nice work. You are truly a paragon of your field. Asterion. Nicely done. We are professionals. Guys, I'm a spellcaster. I should not be showing you up. You okay? Might want to put some ice on that leg. Now, uh, given the warning we received when we walked in, we've definitely got some lighting issues ahead, so... Let's go ahead and swap Shadowheart's mace out for a torch, at least temporarily. Though, uh, once we actually light this thing up, it should actually do slightly more damage than our mace. No, don't light your bow on fire. Jeez. There we go. Professionals. All right, <laughs> let's have a look around. Uh, that's not terrible. No more prayers, only dust and silence. Who are those prayers for? Normally, the patron god is obvious. Not here. Ancient, indecipherable text covers the plaque. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone. Hmm.
We've got a lot of random scenery items here. And I am going to grab them all, but we're actually getting pretty close to time, so I'll just grab all that stuff off screen. Though we do have some food items. I will take those. Much like in Divinity, those basically just act as weak healing items. It is interesting that even innocuous items like candles or uh, jugs of water can serve a tactical purpose. Journey Through the Jungle The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first heard its call. A thousand reed pipes at once, whistling a single, beautiful, terrible song. Ulu Thalong, said Jaw. It's coming. Jaw dropped her pack and scurried up the nearest bidder. With a bit more effort, I climbed a tree of my own, and the two of us surveyed the grassy ground beneath. Awoo! There it was again, above and beneath and all around. So close my skull vibrated from the sound. The ferns and foliage under me rippled and swayed. Jaw held a finger to her lips to demand my silence, and in one motion, it snatched her. A vine, a tentacle? It hardly mattered. The hunter had found its prey. Jaw's scream swelled, then faded as Ulu Thalong dragged her away. I leapt down to give chase, but the creature left no mark behind. The grasses were untrampled, the shrubs unbroken. I had only the memory of that harrowing call to guide me. Interesting. And entirely irrelevant. The adventures of one Baron Von Baron and his goblin guide Jaw as they brave the thick jungles of Chult. Neat. And that book is now in space. I'm gonna, uh, Assume that book is what the door guard was entertaining himself with before we came along and stabbed him. Oh, speaking of which, it looks like that guy was not alone. What are these guys doing? Well, they're definitely hostile. Oh, wow, hold on. That's the, uh, that's the other guy from outside. The one we dropped the flagstone on and then we couldn't find his body. Oh my goodness, it's all making sense now. We had an advantage with um, the guy at the front door because he heard the crash of the flagstone we dropped. So it was more convincing when we told him that Gimbelbach had uh, been injured by a trap. And all of these guys were drawn by the noise, so they're all just standing around outside that doorway instead of doing whatever they'd normally be doing when we came in. That is actually some really interesting continuity. That has uh, also conveniently gathered them around this barrel of oil. I bet we could light that with um, a flaming arrow. I wonder if we can drop down that hole with half our party get them into this room with the corpse then we could shoot a flaming arrow into that barrel from the entrance uh, blow them up and have our fighters rush out and slaughter their backline mages man I am actually really impressed with the variety of approaches they have for what amounts to a fairly minor encounter with a group of bandits Alright, um, I'll tell you what. We're past time, so we do need to wrap this up. We'll hit the pause button for now. I will loot the room that we came in through, 
send all the vendor trash to our camp. Then I will uh, run a couple of quick tests just to make sure we can split our party and have half of them circle around to the other side. I'll see if we can uh, light an arrow on fire and uh, that would hopefully allow us to set off that barrel and we'll pick up here next time as we uh, give these guys a very unpleasant surprise. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Baldur's Gate 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. As always, links are in the description. <laughs>